All right, let's do this thing. I'm going to go into some heavy detail about uh, OA sourcing. These are great techniques to add on to everything that you've already learned, and we'll just get into it. How about that? So these are going to be my wife and I, our best practices for OA sourcing and product evaluation. So first thing that we'll start off with is my wife and I look at OA sourcing in a way that we're looking for two different types of products. Um, one of them is going to be what we typically talk about in OA sourcing, which is sale or discounted items. These, I'm going to go into the details of these, but that's the first kind of category. And then the second is going to be replenishable type items. Uh, we source these two types of products because we're ever expanding our, what I call a portfolio or an investment portfolio of inventory. And I like to think of it that way because every one of these little gems that I'm putting into Amazon produce some kind of profit. So it's immediate and it's actually way better than the stock market in many cases because you're making 50%, 100% ROI. So it's beautiful. And I focus on these items because what they have done for us over the last year, I mean, you can see this is 2020. We started around here and COVID hit about right here, March. And we were doing okay. We were starting to get our OA sourcing done well with leads lists. And we were really ramping that up. And you can see it was going up, 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 up. I don't know what happened in July. I think this was uh, the summer, dog days of summer. And this big expansion here, you know, let, let me turn on my pointer thingy. This big expansion right here was because I turned on a repricer. So almost tripled our sales, which was pretty nice. So that's my little plug for repricers. But then right about here is where we started getting serious about tracking and focusing on adding replenishable items to our list of product line. And then you can just see what happened, you know, for the rest of the year. Now, I wanted to post this too, because everybody might say, oh yeah, 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 Q4, everything goes up on Q4. But keeping with replenishables and the regular sourced items, the discounted items, we're now creating a stable source of, you know, uh, sales and reliable sales because they're happening each month. And this month we'll probably hit 30K. We're almost there. Um, so I just wanted to point that out that it's not just, um, it's not just a sale discounted items, leads list that most of you might have heard from my past. That's why I really, where we really built our business. So what are sales and discounted items? Well, these are any items that you can get on a sale, discounted, coupon codes, um, you know, two for ones, three, you know, two for threes, those kind of things that I'm mentioning here. Um, we use a couple of different tools, extensions. One is called Honey and another one's called Capital One Shopping. You can get coupon codes in the checkout screens of any of your retail sites and it'll just take an immediate discount off of your price of the product. Uh, so any, I, I count these as any item that are discounted in any way before I can check out, okay? I don't include discounts that come after the sale. So like if you use any rebates or coupons that you can get after the sale, um, because quite honestly, that's our little, in insurance fund, you know, we, with any rebates that we get after our purchase of the product, we just kind of put that right away for a little uh, slush fund. Okay. But everything that we get before we go to checkout, that's the actual price of the product. Okay. So that's a considered a discounted item. Now a replenishable item is anything that you can buy at full retail price and there's no discounts on sales, no coupons or any kind of two for ones or anything like that. It's full retail cost. And it's something that we can buy over and over and over again. And I'm going to go into the benefits of both of these things because ha having both of those in your inventory is, you know, going to be very valuable as you saw by my sales. So why a replenishable item? Um, Obviously, if you're buying a product that sells over and over and over, 
and you don't have to get leads lists or you don't have to use a VA. It just saves you time in sourcing. You just buy that product over and over and over. It's going to reduce those costs in sourcing because you don't have to have a VA sourcing those items. You don't have to buy lead lists. You don't have to even spend time in sourcing. You just do, you can create a, a, a buy list for those products and be done and get those products over and over and over again. Um, and what I really love about it and what I've seen with my wife tracking these and actually going for many of the replens that we have is that now we have reliable sales month after month after month. And we also have a better hold on our costs because we can figure out how much do we want to spend? What's our budget that we want to spend month after month after month? So not only do we have reliable sales, but we have reliable budgeting and forecasting. And actually, you know, the, the biggest thing is the cash flow, keeping the cash flow coming in from the regular consistent sales. Okay. And so here's some of the criteria for a sale or discounted item that I look for. And this is, you know, again, supporting the training that you're getting in EBS. So I like to look for a product that's over $20 and for the sale price on Amazon is over $20. And you can see, you know, this is just January's uh, numbers. Uh, we did uh, average order price of $38.56. And what that does is it just creates a heavier profit potential as well. As you'll see, I'm looking for a minimum $7 profit on any discounted items. And then the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that if any price tanks or goes down or any more competition comes aboard, I have some cushion there to make still make a profit. If I have to drop the price myself to get it sold, I still have a little bit of cushion there to make a profit. And then I for sure look for at least a minimum 40% ROI. I actually raise that number if it's a lower dollar item, but I, I want to see at least 40% ROI so that I can, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that we're in double digits for an average profit for all of January. And this actually has gone up to as high as $20. I like to make those kind of dollars um, for each item. I sold many items that were cheap or inexpensive, like $10, anywhere from 10 to $15. And I would make a dollar or make a $2 profit. And I figured it takes just amount as much time to do a $20 or more profit or a, 20, a, um, a sale price of $20 or more on Amazon. It takes as much time to put one of those items into inventory as it would to put a $10, $15 item into inventory as far as the prepping, the packing and the shipping and the effort to buy it. So why not make more on every sale that I'm you know, putting out there? Um, I wanna at least have, I'm gonna go into this in detail, but I wanna at least have 20 sales rank drops per month. And this isn't the BSR, the best sales rank. I'm not just looking at a snapshot in time, I'm looking at an average over a course of history, anywhere from 90 to 180 days, and even longer. And I'm gonna verify those drops by the sales rank in, in the AZ Insight charts. You can also use Keepa. I, I, I'm using both of them right now, but AZ Insight is what I'm gonna talk about in this presentation. Um, and then for sure, no, uh, I'm gonna look at the lowest price sellers that have a lot of inventory. I don't wanna compete against somebody that's got a ton of inventory simply because I might end up having to wait till they sell out before I can sell my product, okay? Now, the criteria for replenishable items is similar. I wanna definitely have a $20 sale price on Amazon. The profit though, I'm gonna lower because if it's a regular seller, I'm gonna make up the profit overall with consistent sales and more uh, quantity over the quality of the price of the sale price or, or for the profit price profit that I'm going to make. Sorry. Um, so I, I might drop it down to $4 profit and, and then I'll know I'm selling it over and over and over again. I might even drop the ROI just slightly, but I don't want to go too, too low. Cause again, you never know if you're going to get, you know, more sellers, more competition. You might have to drop the price a little bit. So keep that up as high as you can. 
you know, Danita taught me way back when to go for 100% ROI. So I actually look for higher than 40% ROI because I know that prices can always change. Um, and now here's the other thing I'm looking for. I, and I judge this by seller and inventory count and by sales rank drops. We're going to be looking at getting at least seven sales per month. I want to sell at least seven units per month. That, that will constitute a, a potential replenishable item. I'm getting some regular activity out of that product. So I'm gonna be looking at the average sales ranks drops per month on the AZ Insight chart. I'm gonna compare it to other sellers in, in their inventory, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a determination on how many I can sell per month. I'm gonna go into that into the graphs in a second. And then, you know, again, I don't wanna see a lot of, uh, inventory with the lowest price sellers, just simply because there'll be big competition. All right, so other criteria now that I use for both types of products, these are pretty standard things. I don't want a restricted item. I do not want a hazmat item. These are things I can't send into FBA and I do all of my business or we do all of our business with FBA. Um, I do not, want to have something with Amazon all over the listing. I'm going to show you that I don't just look at a moment in time, but I'm going to look at a history because I don't want to see a lot of Amazon on that listing. And I don't want to have a brand owner or a private label seller. So somebody that's actually offering the product, I don't want to have them selling the product as well because they can do whatever they want with the price as well as Amazon. They could always knock down the price and they usually do if they're competing with you. So it's a, it's a tough to compete with those kind of people. And then I don't wanna have anything that's gonna get me an IP claim, uh, intellectual property claim. That's something that can hurt your metrics in Amazon. Uh, we personally avoid glass and heavier fragile items simply because it's going to be a lot of prepping and packing and shipping. And we just kind of have a really good efficient system with getting things out the door. As you guys see, I've been posting some, you know, lots of boxes and I don't want to have a piece of glass in some of those uh, items. Um, and then again, I'm going to be reviewing a historical data, not just a point in time. So like the BSR or best sales rank is just a point in time. I'm going to be looking at a history to kind of gauge what's going to be selling how fast I can be selling that. I, I call it sales velocity. I wanna see what kind of velocity I'm gonna get on that product, okay? And then um, this is, all of this is because I want you guys to, to realize that if we, we're really talking about getting VAs and I want you guys to know that this is the criteria you want to give to your VA because then you don't have to do all this yourself. I don't do all this myself. I, I provide training to my VA so that they can go out and do it and bring me those items that I can maybe just vet a little bit further, but I wanna get something started with the VAs because they can save me a lot of time overall. So this is criteria, all this criteria I'm giving you. It used to be said, if you're not online, you're not in business. That's from like 15 years ago. Yeah. All right, now it's that if you're not on Amazon, you're not in business. Regardless of that big dream, you've got to build a foundation. You have to have a business that has cash flow. Do you need more cash? Go and source some more. Shove those products into Amazon. What's going to spit out the other end is profit. It's that simple, isn't it? Then they start looking at it as, this really is a system. So how can I add more to my system? How can I start to scale this? That's why this is so integral, each pillar leading up sequentially to that long-term reliable business. These are the real assets then that somebody who wants to buy a business, this is what they look for. This is the brand launcher, the career launcher, the income launcher. It's a beautiful thing. And I know you're gonna love what this can do for you. You're gonna get a vision. You're gonna get a vision to grow your business, to sell it for a profit. Kind of show your pals, your friends, your family. Yes, you can make a million dollars just selling on Amazon alone.